5677. Here we are again. Um, as you know, this is year number four, and I consider myself a individual fear, willing to compromise. But the question today for me is, how do we unbring a bell? As some of you may or may not know, natural hair breathing, natural hair is most, for the most part, on African Americans or multicultural individuals that have curly hair. And for centuries, Africans have had a culture of planting and or corn breeding for sanitary purposes being out in the cotton field, being out in the field, they had to make sure that they were definitely uh, clean and doing a good job. Now, here we are in the 21st century, slavery, slavery as we know it, supposedly had, is done with. But realistically, unless you're a person of color, you really don't know or can identify with the struggle as it really is. So this bill is just to enable hair braiders the opportunity of being financially self-sufficient. They have been doing this for years without any problem. They have opened up their little small businesses, doing braids, with no problem, they have been uh, uh, subsidizing their income from time to time from doing hair braiding. Before it used to be flats like you would see uh, our and the gang, the you know buckwheat. Then got a little bit more stylish, and now you can disguise the limit with designs and so forth. And so on. Of course, of course, it's it's a it's a craft that. Some people of color, and it's not limited to just people of color. If you have that talent, it can go beyond just people of color. Um, have been doing these styles, they look at you, or you come in with an idea, and they can produce what it is you're looking for. Unfortunately, now we're going for it's a booming industry because we have all kinds of well, the ladies can have all kinds of styles, colors, length of hair. Even the guys can too. Um, and it becomes where corn braiding is an art. Now by the texture, you don't have to have the texture of hair in order to get your hair braided corn braided. Now you can buy the hair and have it done, attached to yours and get the style that you would like to have. It is a situation where the industry has boomed. Synthetic hair is on the market. People are making tons of money. Hair braiding is something that everybody wants to get into. So you have these individuals that are depending on this craft to subsidize their income, mostly um, individuals of color, single parents, and so forth. The opponents have said for the last three years that, you know, we, people of color, need to be trained. So, we, people of color, need to identify and know the difference between uh, dandruff and lice. Synthetic, lice don't live in synthetic hair. And African American hair, lice don't come into that. Not to say that they cannot catch it, but not naturally it does not. Because hair dress is something that natural hair uh, individuals utilize in order to have their hair groomed properly. Some of you might just shampoo your hair, condition it, and that's it on an everyday um, case. African Americans with natural hair may not do that on a daily basis because of the type of hair they have. No one knows better than they. And it's been going on for a The opponents will say, well, it's more, than just, it's more than just doing here. It's sanitation. Who knows better than sanitation but the individuals that had to slave and clean the master's houses 
had to clean and take care of the master's babies. Had to clean and clean and clean. So it's another concern. Now, I have certainly been open to compromise because as a chairperson and as a member of a committee, I've always said if the two can get together and work something out, it's always better for everybody. Unfortunately, as I said, while trying that, it came into, it turned into a frita. Unfortunately, like I said at the beginning, how do you unring a bell? Well, most of you know me pretty well that that is going to be a miracle that I would like to see happen. This committee, this house is not the problem in any way, shape, or form because you get it. Each and every time people of color get an opportunity to become self-sufficient, you have the gatekeepers or you got issues and problems put before them to stop them from becoming more independent and being able to do what they do best, survive. And legally, our governor is always talking about get an education, follow the rules, and you can succeed. Education with regards to hair braiding, that came from my great grand, my grand, and I am a braider. I don't do it as a profession, but I do it when necessary. Unfortunately, there are many individuals just like me that it was something that wasn't taught. You have the gift, or you can look and you learn. You don't need any schooling. You don't need to be able to have someone who realistically don't know the craft to teach you what you already been taught by generations. Again, this is not, this committee is not the problem as we know it. Year number four, that's why I didn't bring all uh, other witnesses to try to convince you. Fair is fair, open to, to negotiating, talking about what would work for everyone, but unfortunately, as of right now, the opposition has not extended that. So therefore, to me, it's like what they want, how they want it, when they want it. For me, it's the people first. Slavery has gone a long time ago. This is ours, FUBU, for us, by us. That's the end of the day, and I thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Representative Solomon? Is the language in this bill the same language that we passed out of committee last year and also passed on the House floor? Yes. Thank you. Representative Chairman Dale. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Chairman, th this bill has, as you point out, been before it's four years in a row. <clears throat> for the benefit of some of the newer members, we're, we're talking about eliminating regulations on one's ability to engage in their cultural heritage because right now it's stuck in with this cosmetology and all of these things that require licenses and learning about chemicals and, and the hours in the shop and all this stuff. And we're just simply trying to take a cultural heritage and preserve it. Correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. There's no one being harmed. There's no chemicals. There's no all of these dangers that were presented over the years. They don't exist. Do they, they don't exist. So we're simply talking about what most little girls do when they have a sleepover when they're six years old with their friends, and that's do each other's hair. Yes. And why should we regulate it? Right. It wasn't supposed to be here to begin with, but like you said, they got mixed up with several other things that do need regulation. There's absolutely no chemicals that is utilized in hair breeding at all, none whatsoever. No types of equipment unless you know you want to cut the, the hair if you want extension. And to that degree, now you don't have to buy the extension and cut it because you can buy it the length that you want it. It's there for you. Uh, colors, as you see, some people have rainbows of colors in their hair. So there's absolutely no reason for this to have been regulated at all, and it's just saying, look, take it and do what you've been doing, self-sufficiency for individuals independence. Thank you, Chairman.